Welcome back to Thoughts, Feelings, Emotions presents The News. This is the podcast show where we cover week old entertainment and pop culture news hosted by two Daniels, where one Dan knows nothing and the other Dan knows everything. I am the Dan that knows nothing. Yep, that is how it works. Yeah. And this is my co-host, Danny. Hello. What have we got coming up this week's episode? Uh, we've got... I didn't do that. Fuck. Uh, we have Bungie winning lawsuits. <laughs> Old blurry videos getting up-tuned. And the Olympics, but gamers. Ooh, interesting. I don't know what that means, but I'm curious. But we're going to start off going into an old favorite. One that we have not done for a very long time. Since maybe even she has Neither one of us watches anything the other one watches. Yes, although we did try to watch. We were going to watch Last of Us, but then we both got busy. No, I just didn't care. <laughs> okay, fair you enough. You got busy. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yes, rapid reviews. Where the section where we both watch something and give a quick review on that episode. And we're going to talk about Mandalorian Season 3, Episode 1. However, I've only watched half of it. I think it would have been better if they'd just done the episodes that they did with the Mandalorian and Boba Fett. To be fair, it feels weird that there's just some episodes that don't explain things in the Mandalorian. Yep. <laughs> if you haven't watched Boba Fett, he gave a bear baby. And now he has the baby again. Yeah, and you're like, so you have to go. How's he here? <laughs> yeah, what what happened? Why did this happen? And I wouldn't force anyone to watch the man, uh, the Boba Fett episodes to figure out what's happening. Yeah, but to be fair, you can actually just watch those episodes on Book of Boba Fett because they have nothing to do with Boba Fett. The last episode, you can't. Yes, but I guess that does that. You don't have to know because you would have just gone, oh, he flies away and then he gets called back. So technically, if you don't watch that episode, you can skip it. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's weird choices. But yeah, it's fine. It's bad. I actually can't remember anything that happened in it. <laughs> no, not really. I remember the sort of start where he seems to be back trying to become a Mando again. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I remember what happened. Okay. I won't spoil it. We'll, we'll spoil it when it's all out and we can all talk about it. Nice. Nice. I think that's a louder bell ring that he did for the actual intro for syncing. Yep. I've been drinking unregistered products that aren't alcoholic so i don't know why i'm a bit fuzzy probably the pain medication or you know someone just slapped you in the face for being an idiot maybe but let's move on let's move on into stream that movie news into my head and we have very little to talk about this week but we're gonna talk about sizu yeah it's a new tra- well it was an old trailer um basically a, 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 a nazi hunting film <laughs> Ooh, Nazis. But in Finland, and an old man doing the John Wick, but against Nazis. But he's old. That sounds kind of fun. I can't lie. It looks interesting. <laughs> but he's got to deliver his gold because he's an old-timey gold digger. And then he has to... He runs into some Nazis, and then he has to kill them all. <laughs> right. That, that, sounds, that actually sounds kind of fun. So, yeah. does he have a dog as well that he wants to look after? He's got a horse and a dog. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if the dog dies. I doubt the dog dies. But yeah, he smashes a dude's face in with a pickaxe. And a helmet. Yeah. I, oh, no, wait, it's a knife. But he has a pickaxe. I'm assuming that's going to be a thing. Oh, this is literally from the studio behind John Wick. Yeah. I, Why would you I didn't real I thought it was just like a John Wick style thing. No, this is John Wick's great 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 grandfather, probably. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Ah, oh, probably. Also, when it says studio, it just probably means Warner Brothers. Or no, Paramount. I think it's Paramount. Who owns John Wick? Lionsgate. Lionsgate owns. Yeah. The guy gets a fucking tank mine thrown in his face. Also, they do the Wonder Woman thing where he's hiding behind a shield. Yeah, or Captain America, just saying. Also Captain America did that. Yeah, but uh, the 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 that on dead ma- like no man's land. And ah, iconic yes, shot yes. is more Wonder Woman than uh, Captain America. But yeah, I think it looks fun. I would watch it. To be fair, it looks kind of you know. I don't think I would watch it. Watched John Wick, so why would you watch this one? I never said I don't is it want to watch John Nazis Wick. In I just it. haven't watched John Wick. Is it because it has Nazis in it, Danny? You love the Nazis. I love watching Nazis get killed. That's a good take. Yeah, there you go. See, well done. Not racist. And your uncontroversial opinions. <laughs> Unlike ah, talk about episode. uncontroversial opinions. You should check out our last week's episode of TBO where we covered un- blah, 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 controversial opinions on the internet. And I try and get Dan cancelled. You do. And I succeed I using didn't say artificial bad. intelligence. I didn't say anything bad. And Danny's just made a clip out of me saying things I didn't say. Using highly advanced artificial intelligence. Is that called you stitching words together? You'll have to listen to find out. Nice. I can't wait to listen to it. Anyway, uh, we got one more bit of news. This is a South Park lawsuit, HBO Max, who's Paramount over licensing. Yeah, so what? who actually does own South Park? Then? Is it, well, I thought it was Paramount. Uh, I can't remember. I think Paramount basically owns it, but before Paramount had a streaming service, they licensed it to HBO Max 
for 500 million and then uh then paramount made a streaming service and then yeah. they signed a deal with Trey and Matt Parker for a fuck ton more episodes to go on their streaming service once their deal with HBO Max was done. But HBO Max's lawyers fucked up because they only specified for seasons, but didn't specify how many episodes per season. So the South Park people basically gave them a couple of episodes per season. <laughs> so I think, uh, and then whilst also making uh, different things for Paramount, I think, which were like specials and uh, movies and stuff like that, because all the HBO wanted was seasons and episodes. So HBO is now suing them for the right, uh, because they basically are trying to weasel out of their deal. But apparently, according to Paramount's lawyers, HBO ha hasn't even paid up on the uh, streaming asset money that they were owed for having HBO Max have South Park on it, which doesn't surprise me because HBO Max is losing a lot of money because HBO and pa like Warner Brothers have no money. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Dude. Yeah, that's so funny though. At least only two episodes a season. Imagine that. Like, you actually, you know, you got this <laughs> subscription service, and then you go, "Oh, I'm going to watch my favorite show," and there's just two episodes of it on it. So the lawsuit alleges that when HBO Max bid on the South Park streaming rights, it did so with the insurance that would be free new seasons of ten episodes each. The suit alleges, however, that only two episodes were delivered for the first of those seasons, and only six. For the second, HBO Max understands that the third season will also consist of six episodes for a total of 14 across the three seasons. And they paid $500 million for this. How do... To be fair, even $500 million for three seasons sounds like a ridiculous amount. Oh, yeah. But you think of how much money South Park... Like, how popular South Park is. I still feel like $500 million is a lot. How much did Arcane the, cost to make? Because you're not telling way me. Way less than... No, this is, uh, this is like, to have the exclusive streaming rights to it as well. I guess. So because you've... Because... Uh, Netflix paid a fuck ton of money for like The Office and Friends and all of that. So like big TV shows that have wide, massive audiences can bring in people because people love comfort. It's easier to get yeah, people with an old hard. show than it is with a new show because people will sit like Friends and The Office and Seinfeld, I think, are still like some of the most watched things on Netflix, despite them being like 20 years old. I mean, I still People will just go back Simpsons. and watch the same thing over and over again. <clears throat> I, I still watch Simpsons and Disney Plus regularly. Exactly. Uh, meanwhile, in 2021, MTV and Paramount subsidiary announced a 900 million deal with Parker and Stone for the exclusive South Park content that would run on the Paramount Plus. In the press release, an MTV executive was quoted as saying that the deal would help fuel Paramount Plus. So, essentially, <laughs> Matt and Trey Parker basically became billionaires over like two deals. That's, a, that's crazy. Just because of how popular South Park is and how much money they needed to get. But I think one of them's worth more than the other for some reason. I don't know why. But I mean, out of whoever made the best deal out of this was Matt and Trey Parker. Yeah, it clearly. Was just... But yeah, I find it just funny that because of how fucked Warner Brothers is, they failed to um, check what their negotiation contract was. <laughs> they yeah, just Warner... assumed. Warner Brothers so they... <laughs> seems to make a horrendous amount of mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> it's quite funny. But, uh, it's, yeah, but it was. Uh, but yeah, and uh, apparently Discovery has failed and refused to pay license fees that it owes Paramount for the episodes that have already been delivered, which HBO Max continues to stream. So yeah, ultimately it will be funny to see who wins this. But considering, I'm pretty sure Paramount is the reason Henry Cavill had to still have the mustache in. Uh, what's its Justice League when they were trying to do reshoots? I think Paramount's got better lawyers. It does seem that way. Is, is Paramount, is Paramount than... worth more money than Warner Brothers? Probably not. Paramount Pictures do produce the Mission Impossible, so yeah, I think I think the Paramount people have better lawyers. I'll just quickly check how much is Paramount worth. I don't think it's worth. I think Paramount is worth way less than. Well, Warner uh, Brothers have got a lot more, haven't they? Yeah. It's also now Warner Brothers Discovery, which means it's even worth even more. Hmm. Uh, Paramount is worth 14.83 billion apparently, and Warner Brothers, probably worth less than that, but at the moment, is worth 37.5 billion. So yeah, you'd think Warner Brothers would be able to pay for better lawyers. <laughs> you would have thought so, but as you as we know, Warner Brothers do not get the finances. They lost a lawsuit check. to get Henry Cavill to shave a mustache. <laughs>
And I reckon they'll lose the deal on this because they didn't specify how many episodes per season. They just asked for three seasons with the assumption that you'd get ten. Well, so, that's their own fault, yeah. isn't it? Well, that's that's what it looks like. But yeah, it's just funny. <clears throat> Anyway, let's move on into the weird, wacky, wonderful, where over $30 million worth of Funkos are headed to landfill. Yeah. It's pretty sad. I like my Funkos. Well, you're not buying them, are you? Oh, I bought, That's I bought, why. I They've got one. too much in storage. No one's buying them. So inventory at the end of the year totaled $246.4 million, an increase of 48% compared to a year ago, the company wrote in a press release on Wednesday. Right. Uh, this includes inventory that the company intends to eliminate in the first half of 2023 to reduce fulfillment costs by managing inventory levels to align with the operating capacity of our distribution center. This is expected to result in a write down in the first half of 2023 of approximately 30 to 36 million dollars. Translation, Funko's warehouses are overflowing with five inch chibi replicas of Machine Gun Kelly, Spider-Man, Pikachu and every other vaguely famous cultural icon and throwing them out will be cheaper than trying to sell them. I suppose, yeah, if things have been cancelled or they're just not popular anymore. Or also, to, they just know, make rapists. too much. <laughs> like you could only have so many punk Funko Pops on a shelf. Yeah, and yeah. you can only buy so many things. Like, if you buy the one that you want, you're not gonna buy another one unless you're a collector. Although this will help the collection game because the scarcity of the value. True, true. I mean, I'm happy with my my one Funko Pop. I have some Funko Pops, but I just got them randomly and I never actually bought them, except for the Iron Man one. I got this Lee Scoresby one as a gift. And it was meant to go in my PC. Lee Scoresby. No. It's a character from his Dark Materials. Oh, the, yes, the Golden Compass movie character spin off show. No. <laughs> his Dark Materials is not a spin off of the Golden Compass. Wait, what well, wasn't the Dark Materials? <laughs> it, no, they are both the same thing, but it's not a spin off. Yeah, it is a spin off. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's a spin off. No, no. Yeah. It's like saying. The Tom Holland Spider-Man films are spin-off of the Andrew Garfield ones. Well, they are. No, they're not. They are, because they're all in the same universe. The MCU has joined them. So they are spin-offs. They're side Well, it's now crazy, then, that the first Tobey Maguire film was the first ever MCU film. Well, it depends on who you add the X-Men. Well, X-Men haven't been added yet, so... X-Men came out 2000, and they added Patrick Stewart. <laughs> That's true, but you don't know if it's the same Patrick Stewart. Also, once it's Deadpool not. confirms that Logan's in the MCU, it will be... Then it the will X-Men. be here. Yeah. yeah. Also, technically, Howard the Duck, because they reference Howard the Duck. And there was yeah, a it might not the be Duck. the same one. Damn, they've got multiverses. You don't think they've just got every single thing and they're just going to go, yeah, all of these. So does that mean that every film ever is part of the MCU? Every MCU, every Marvel film that Disney can own or can get the licensing to, yes. But if the, M- if the multiverse exists, surely they can create universes that don't have anything to do with Marvel. And they Look, can it gets complicated because Star Wars is technically part of the MCU, but multiple actors from Star Wars are in the MCU. <laughs> Wait, Star Wars is not part of the MCU? No, Star Wars is in it as ca- like an oh, actual right. thing. He has a de- like Peter Parker has a Lego Death Star. <laughs> And they reference Star Wars in the movies. They reference yeah. Batman and Superman in the movies. So technically, the DCU exists in the MCU. <laughs> so you could add a lot of shit to the MCU if you want to. No wonder people yeah. are dropping off. It's too complicated. Yes, and moving on. So yes, there is now an Olympics esports. Can no, you be? No, it's an official Olympics offset. This is official. Yeah, I know. I'm saying, yeah, it's an Olympic esports. Yeah, the official has made the official Olympics committee has added esports. That's actually great. Call of Duty. (laughs) No, uh, no, no. like it's chess. (laughs) I'm surprised like Rocket League wouldn't be in it. No, you okay? So here, here, here is the list of games that the 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 official um, Olympics committee has chosen. Chess.com. Lovely. Okay. Gran Turismo. That's quite a surprise. Yeah, uh, but it's recognizable as a brand and many people know what it is. Then you got Archery is represented by Tic Tac Bow. Okay. A, a game created by Refract Technologies, a Singapore-based studio and published by Project 99. It is also worth noting that Refract Technologies founder is an active commission member of the Global Esports Federation. The game does what it says on the tin, combining Archery with the classic children's game Tic Tac Toe and was released in late February of this year. So far, only 150 downloads. <laughs> it's a mobile game, by the way. Oh dear. 
It is also affiliated with the World Archery Federation and the International Olympic Committee recognized archery federation. Oh. It is also developing a they are also developing a virtual taekwondo, a flagship game for the Axis, a the motion tracking based console which the company successfully kickstarted in 2018. The game uses motion tracking technology to translate real world body movements into the game, allowing for no contact virtual sparring. So they slapped a connect on a box and went fight. <laughs> Yeah, I'm also surprised Just Dance isn't here. Why are you surprised by that, Dan? How's that competitive? I suppose get a high score in Just Dance? Yeah. Uh, representing baseball is WBSE, uh, WBSCE Baseball Power Pros, which is available on the PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch for a strangely low 99 cents. The World Baseball and Software Confederation has partnered with Konami, the much maligned publisher behind Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill series, for the game. Swift and Virtual Regatta, virtual versions of cycling and sailing respectively, are relatively popular translations of their respective sports. The same cannot be said for Tennis Clash, a mobile game produced by Wildlife Studios, a massive mobile developer which has repu... repu Reputation for intensive pay-to-win microtransactions. <laughs> Product reviews across various app stores cite sudden, unpredictable change in game balance from update to update, which can be elevated by simply spending more money on the game. I felt like we could come up with a better list of esports. The Olympics choosing to competitively legitimize a notorious pay-to-win sports game, especially in the company of enthusiast products like Swift, Virtual Regatta, and Virtual Taekwondo, feels like an extremely odd decision from the uh, from this article. And also, yeah, just uh, dance, dance, revelation, revolutions. Yeah, see, I would have thought it made much more sense to have something like League of Legends or Rocket League, Call of Duty, Dota, things that already Dota. have esports. Fortnite, if you really want. Yeah, that would make sense. You know, games are um, already recognized esports. Yeah. F1, but mind you, uh, yeah. there's, a, there's already an F1 championships. So I don't think it kind of needs Apex. One. I know we don't Apex, like it. Apex, yeah. yeah. Um, we fit. <laughs> <laughs> Mar- the thing is, that they have Mario an Olympics. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, I'm pretty sure the Olympics has an official licensed game that comes out every year. <laughs> Uh, not I know they time. have Mario and I know they have Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. That does exist. Yeah, they could have done that. Why are they not doing people using the Wii Fit or Wii Switch or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. It's like the Oscars. Yeah, I feel like this is set sense. up to. F- I feel like this is fed up, fed, fed, uh, set up to fail, so that they don't have to ever do this again, and they can go. We tried doing esports for the Olympics because people demanded that we do something, but look how badly it went. However, this is not the first time this has happened because they also added esports to the Commonwealth Games. Mm, and I can't remember what they added there. I don't know. I think it was not so stupid, if I remember. Because I'm, I'm sure Rocket League was in it. Esports World Championship. Right, well, let's have a look see. Uh, Rocket League, Dota Women's eFootball Open. Yeah, Rocket League. Yeah, so like those actually make sense. <laughs> But like yeah, FIFA was a bit, bit crap, but you could have done FIFA instead, but whatever. It's still... No, it's no longer FIFA, though, Dan, is it? <laughs> it still is at the minute. Not not this year. Not now. It's now EA Sports, FA, whatever. Yeah. But they had Dota, which makes sense, because Dota is an actual popular esports. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I, these are three esports. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's have... crazy. Anyway, talking about games... Best of esports games. Hang on. Let me just... Oh, okay. Overwatch, Players Unknown Battlegrounds, Smite, Valorant, Hearthstone, Tom Clancy's, World of Warcraft... Uh, Street Fighter, uh, Counter Strike, Call of Duty, H1Z1, Mario, Bro- Super Smash Bros. Melee, Halo. So many, so many sports esports league uh, games. Things that have like legitimate careers. Oh well, let's actually go on to gaming. Yeah, let's go to a gaming section of We've Lost a Controller of the Newser, where Valve lured 40,000 Dota cheaters into a trap before banning them all in one day. Yeah. That it's is quite, a... quite, quite good, to be fair. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the company revealed that it had constructed a cunning trap to catch thousands of players that you were using third party software to access information used internally by Dota client that wasn't visible during normal gameplay, leading them. Lending them an unfair advantage in game. It le- worked like this. Once it became aware of the exploit, Valve released a patch that created a section of data inside the game client that would never be read during normal gameplay, but that could be read by these exploits. Valve says that every single one of the accounts banned yesterday had read from that secret data, giving the company extremely high confidence that every ban was well deserved. 
So they basically tricked people. Yeah. <laughs> they basically created data that couldn't be read during normal gameplay, but if exploits and cheats read that data, they would know that it was cheating and could ban the account, which is funny. Yeah, I feel like this could... Oh, this should be added in sort of other games as well. Okay, but yeah, well, once it's now out in the open, people are going to know that and work around Well, yeah, that. but you... If you have like hidden bits of code in different games, it's a lot harder to make a generic hack for it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They would be a lot harder to make. I'm sure more companies will do this. Yeah, and you can think you can keep updating it each time as well. You could keep changing this bit of data or changing also, I'm where sure it's placed. If Valve wanted to, I don't know how it works for Steam, but if Steam offers a service well that when you download from Steam, it downloads the um, data with that secret coding so that you can for other companies to find out if people are using cheats on their software i don't know how it works but yeah yeah it sounds pretty cool though i mean games always get ruined by hackers warzone mm. was one of the famous ones that was completely ruined for me i've i've never really encountered many hackers and if i do i don't really i get annoyed but i'm just like well <laughs> i suck got... at the game anyway so it's not gonna make it any different i remember i remember playing at sort of the height of the hackers and every game i play, played there's always hackers in the game every single time and it was getting unbelievable the only game i really remember having like hackers hackers in it is gta 5 oh yeah where it's just um, it's it's just basically unplayable and it's not fun because you just stand up and then someone shoots you in the back of the head from nowhere and you're just like well that's fun and then you just walk away and then they just keep following you trying to get you to like rage quit yeah <laughs> and i'm just like why <laughs> this is so pointless <laughs> Yeah, I despise hackers. And Fall Guys as well. I've seen them. Who hacks on Fall Guys, man? Oh, yeah. I've seen the videos of people just like jumping straight to the end. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> why would you bother? <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. And talking about cheating, Bungie wins a $4.3 million lawsuit against the cheat seller arbitration. Yes. Uh, they, they basically won a lot of money, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe they yeah, can put that so. money towards changing the voice actor behind some of the new characters in the DLC. <laughs> Bloody Nimbus, man. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what you're just here that reverb on, on the voice. I don't get why the reverb. Also, the character design is just weird. Yeah. I think a lot of people are quite unhappy with the new DLC. I Mainly the campaign. Fine. I think everyone's happy about a lot of things apart from the campaign. Mm, I don't know. I, I think Nimbus is yet. a big part of that. It's just annoying. <laughs> Well, so fact, you know, this city's dying. People, you know, this might be the end of life as it jokes. is. He just makes jokes about everything. And he's like, oh, yeah, guys, it'd be fine. Don't worry about it. And you're like, I mean, to be honest, that would probably be me in a situation where the world's ending. I'd just be making jokes. Yeah, but you do it's it in a nice more sarcastic to... way. He doesn't do it sarcastic. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, genuinely. he seems to be trying really hard to make it like a joke. Yeah, just be, oh, happy, guys. Happy, happy time. Like, you shouldn't be making this happy. Oh, that's my rant about this anyway. Sorry. News. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, they, Bungie won this money against hackers, and they're going at it again, apparently, for they're trying to do another lawsuit. For 6.7 Yeah, against Lavi Cheats. Yeah, uh, they basically um, say that they the, they basically want uh, at least 2,000 per, per, per download. That sounds unreasonable, they, but... Well, it, just in terms of, like, damages. 2,000 for each download to the game caused by cheaters and, like, people leaving... And not coming back because they don't enjoy the experience. Uh, stolen code data, basically. All of those sorts of things. Uh, breaking terms and conditions. All of those sorts of things. Um, and also, it's just if you severely punish people for hacking, people will be less likely to do it if they can actually have like legal precedent against them. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's going to stop... Hopefully, it will stop more people from trying to hack in Destiny. <laughs> Also, Destiny is one of those games, I don't know why you want to hack in it. The PvP experience isn't great as it is. It's not really an eSport. I mean, I know they're trying to push it to be an eSport now, but still. But yeah, so they, uh, the, the basically 2,790 times the down, uh, the cheat was downloaded from Levy Cheats. Um, so 2,000 times that is about 6.7 million. And they're just basically going for hackers. Like, it's a good thing. I don't know why COD isn't doing more, like, because going Because COD doesn't after. care. Oh, they're no, because like, they, 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 get the <laughs> they still anyway. get people. Yeah, they're more busy trying to push microtransactions on people. <laughs> I think yeah. Destiny does that as well. Oh, 100%. Destiny's awful for it. We got Tess Everver. Tess also, Everver. apparently in, like, um other countries, there's an extra vendor. Really? F just Yeah, apparently there's an extra vendor in some countries oh. who does more, um, more microtransaction stuff, apparently. Um, they might have gotten rid of it, but I remember that being a thing before. I doubt it's there now. I'm sure it, it might be. 
you, you could do a quick Google. I'm going to talk about Square Enix as their CEO has stepped down amid the big changes in gaming. Now, Square Enix, if I remember, were one of the ones pushing for crypto and NFTs. NFTs. Yes, this was one of those people who was pushing for it. Yes, and it seems that possibly due to all this FTX meltdown that they're going to step down because of how bad crypto has gotten at this stage. Mm. There's not really too much details that's been given on it. Yeah. Uh, uh. Okay. So yeah, I found it. I found it. I found it. Okay. So Yuna is a character many would not be familiar with, but is an interesting addition to the game. Destiny 2 has an electric cast of characters that fans have launched on... Okay, but Luna is different. This character does not even appear in the game for a majority of players. Here is everything you need to know. Luna is not only a mysterious... Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. <laughs> she sells exotic items and her inventory rotates through a ver variety of weapons and armors. She has a store in the Baza section of the tower located between Ikora and Hawthorne. Luna represents a group of known, known as the Marguan... <laughs> oh, fuck me. I can't pronounce that. Yugan Hua Legion, and based on her outfit, appears she also works for Eververse. That is basically everything there is to know about Luna. She doesn't have much of a character, and there's fairly good reason. If you are reading this, you are in any way familiar. You be, might be thinking there's no vendor in the bazaar called Luna. In a way, you are right. For a must, Luna does not exist, however. Oh, fuck me! In South Korea. Okay, there we go. <laughs> it appears in South Korea. That's <laughs> so all we need to know. What do they sell? Uh. Exotic armor and uh, IGR benefactor. Uh, inter internet gaming room. Essentially a gaming internet calf. There are quite a few common in, uh, known as a PC bang. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think she just exists in South Korea. Okay, cool. <laughs> she, Thank you. She, yeah, but it's just funny that they're like secret vendors. That is weird, yeah. Just to sell you more stuff. Huh. Anyway, yeah, Square Enix. Yeah, uh, so what would you it, make it, of this guy stepping down? Do you think it's because of crypto? Um... No, I think the company's still pushing for it. I think they're just trying to get a new person in who has more, like, doesn't have all of the negative association with him for crypto. They're basically right. trying to find, I think, another person who likes crypto and NFTs, but doesn't push them as hard as this guy was, because he's caused a lot of controversy around the company because of it. Well, yeah, I still don't understand why NFTs need to exist in games. Uh, same or reason to exist in, why all, but... uh, loot boxes do. Well, they're getting banned. To, to get children to pay for things that they don't understand. Has FIFA been... Has FIFA st I think, yeah, FIFA's still got loot boxes, but they must get rid I of I think e e a EA is still... Um... Pushing, pushing against it well because like commentaries have banned loot boxes but yeah. ea just pays the fines i'm pretty sure because <laughs> they i'm pretty sure the fines are nothing to them they make the so much of money, money from it yeah i'm pretty sure the amount of money they'd make off them is inconceivable compared to how much uh their fines are <laughs> the game so. should, should just be banned if it has loot boxes it should have an 18 rating is that simple right. yeah but kids still play on it doesn't matter. I, rem I, I still play played 18 more. plus games when I was like 10. <laughs> no, but your parents buy it for you. Yeah. And if your parents, parents don't understand. Oh, it's 18 for gambling. Oh, maybe I won't buy this for my child. Because gambling. No parent has ever looked at it and gone, oh, it's 18 for gambling. I won't give it Some to parents my kid. Would. Some parents would. Very few. If they're fine with their kid doing like shooting like normal people in a game i'm pretty I sure i think that's different i actually do think it's a big difference getting hooked on gambling as a child is way worse than just killing someone with blood yeah but no pet like most people like there's no i don't know i think it's more parents but i think it's also shifting blame from companies who intentionally put them in there because they can get away with it because no parents are they they know that it will fall on the parents not the company <laughs> so. yeah, i suppose but still it should be banned oh yeah no i agree it make gaming so much more fun <laughs> It would, it, it would. But that's not what companies are about. They're infinite profits. Every tech company is infinite profits. That is true. Anyway, let's go to game trailers now, where the game that I am most excited for this year, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and there's now released the official co-op gameplay. Now, unfortunately, I feel like I'm not going to be able to play this game co-op. Also, people don't like this. <laughs> Because it doesn't look very good. And speaking of microtransactions and loot boxes, we still don't know if this game's going to have them, but it does look like it is going to be an always-on live service game, similar to Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> so, Also, my biggest takeaway from this fucking trailer, why the fuck is ba Captain Boomerang using a fucking machine gun and not using boomerangs? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> every fucking shot of him is he's using, like, mini pistols. 
To be fair, so is King Shark. Yeah, but he's using a turret gun, I'm pretty sure. And but his he he's done that in the comics, whereas Boomerang, his name is Captain Boomerang, and he doesn't throw a single fucking boomerang in the entire trailer. I get that he would die instantly if he was using a boomerang against the Justice League, but like, come on. <laughs> but yeah, people are not happy about this because it looks like very generic um looter shooter, uh Marvel's Avengers type gameplay where you just shoot a big red orb that is and true people, and people are very disappointed that it's coming from the people who made the arkham games the thing is i still have enough faith in rocksteady at the moment but do no. you have enough faith in my uh warner brothers not to have forced them to do things they didn't want to do not really no but i have enough faith in rocksteady to make a good game especially from I a story point of view yeah story i don't know how gameplay wise because i i have not seen anything interesting from it it looks boring. I'm not going to lie. I don't even think the story looks that interesting, to be honest. No, yeah, but Rocksteady, in the Batman games, things you don't like the Batman games, did you? I tried them. I never finished them. See, I love the Batman games. I love the story mm. in them. I love the gameplay for them. Well, this one continues off Arkham Knight, doesn't it? I think so. No, it doesn't. Which? Because Batman's no, dead. There's, yeah. But ba- Batman's think... dead in Arkham Knight. Wait, which one? does? No, because the Gotham Batman Knights dies. doesn't... Batman yeah, dies yeah. in Arkham, Arkham games. Yeah, but Batman dies in the comics all the time and comes back from the dead. I suppose, but, you know. Doesn't mean anything. People come back from the dead all the time. You just fake your death. Do you see his dead corpse? Do you see him shoved into a box? Clark Kent style? And then Clark Kent came back from the dead. I suppose not. Do you not reckon he's gone deep undercover to try and find out whether or not Brainiac was coming to Earth and he needed to fake his death so that he could stuff a guy into a suit and pretend it's him when he gets resurrected from the dead and then he can come back and fight his self as dead? That's my guess. (laughs) (laughs) Comics can do stupid shit, movies can do stupid shit, you can bring a character back from the dead and no one is safe from the dead. Anyways, I'm still gonna play it, I think. This still looks better to me than Gotham Knights. Yeah, I didn't even bother to really pay much attention to what happened with Gotham Knights. Yes, I mean, I'm a bit. That was the same that. issue. That was the same issue for me. It was just it was, like, it's oh. the same thing. I don't know why it's. I think it's always a problem when you try to focus on more than one character. Or try and make it for people to have friends to play with mm. and build an experience around having four people have a consistent schedule and multiple timings where people don't just play it leave play it on their own come back overpowered and ruin the experience for everyone else because the leveling system gets fucked <laughs> yeah yeah very true. it was my problem with the division it was my problem with other games every time you have a multiplayer game that requires your friends to play with you also the online always thing sucks yeah like you can't just play the campaign solo and not have it online (laughs) anyway let's move on into uh microsoft and and nvidia and apparently they are announcing a new expansive game deal where this is going to include bringing xbox pc games to geforce now this is all i think this one is also all of these i think uh, uh, based on whether or not microsoft can acquire activision blizzard because these are for like Call of Duty and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I, feel I like think this one will go through regardless. But the Nintendo one is, which we're also covering, is to also. I think this is Microsoft just pushing to try and make it appear like, hey, look, we're gonna put more stuff. We're not gonna just have it on Microsoft. We're gonna put it on all the other things. Let us buy Activision. But that <laughs> the thing is, it's still you still own this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It doesn't matter but where you put the, it, you own yeah, but, this. Yeah, yeah, but to the general public and to people who don't understand anything business related, people go, oh yeah, but it's on this platform. That means I don't pay Microsoft. No, 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 no you still pay Microsoft for this. Yeah, any any reason... Uh, GeForce Now is a different thing because it's just your Steam library or your, your games library. So your Activision... Yeah, yeah. It's more so about your, streaming your, stuff, yeah, GeForce Now. Yeah, but like uh, the Nintendo... Also, my thing with the Nintendo one is because they basically confirmed their 10-year commitment to bring uh, Call of Duty to Nintendo Switch or whatever Nintendo products are out in that 10-year life sp- cycle. No Nintendo hardware has ever been able <laughs> to run a Call of Duty game yeah, at that. I know. So it would... It would probably be a mobile version which would be bad or at least not the perfect version of call of duty so it's not bringing actual call of duty to the thing or they're gonna have to implement their streaming software by bringing over like the xbox game pass thing or the x cloud or geforce now to the nintendo which would be good but it also 
still just means Microsoft has control over fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, Microsoft seems to always have... They can't get it. Microsoft cannot get Call of Duty. It just cannot be allowed. Well, it's still to be decided. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. But it just, I, we both know. But this, is, this is so... This is such a transparent thing of Microsoft basically just coming out and going, look, we're not going to hoard it. We're not. Ten years, man. We won't make a Call of Duty in that ten years because we'll have Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 and we'll just have, like, continuous endless cycles of Battle Royale games. But Call of Duty, man... Coming to also after that 10 years, what are they going to do? It is like 10 years is not a long time. <laughs> no, it's just going to stay back to Microsoft, isn't it? And then they're going to be like, oh, look at that, we've got this. And the Monopoly. Oh, time. look, if you want it, you have to pay us a lot of money. Oh, that's a shame. All your fan base now is hooked on Call of Duty on this console. Be a shame if they couldn't play it anymore. They'd have to come to us. Oh, that sucks, man. Give us $200 billion and we'll let you have Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's crazy, but yeah, but yeah, this is all these all, all these deals that Microsoft is signing are totally dependent on whether or not they get it, and they're doing it at the moment to basically show that they look like they're gonna not hoard the game. Because <laughs> the thing is, Activision Blizzard could do all of this without Microsoft. Yes, they could. Yeah, but it's Microsoft who's pushing it because they want it on more platforms to get more money. <laughs> It is so transparent, and I don't know why people don't look at it like that. But whatever. Yeah, because with Microsoft's services and streaming and that, it makes it much easier to bring it to things like Nintendo or mobile. I know yeah. Call of Duty Mobile already exists, but I mean, actual it will be, Call of Duty. It will, yeah, as as a streamed version, which yeah. will be laggy and crap. And I think the Nintendo is still only 720p screen resolution. So. Is that actually? No, it can't be. I'm pretty sure the OLED version is still 720p. <laughs> It was that on the actual screen, but it's still HDMI, right? Well, the HDMI output isn't. Yeah, it's still it's HDMI. No, um, you, you can't be serious. Screen resolution: uh, 1080p for the OLED uh, TV and 720p handheld. Okay, no, that's that's not too bad. But I mean, the actual output of the TV must be at least 1080p. Yeah, there's 1080p TV. But you that's cannot. Upsc- you cannot do that- an output of 720p in 2023. You can't do yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you can, <laughs> but you could, yeah, it would but be. It would be uh, I'm imagining it though. It would be upscaled from 720p because it would have to run at 720p. Or I don't know. I don't know. No, I yeah, it's, seven, like the reason... it's 720p on the handheld. I'm no, pretty I think, sure I think the, the reason um... why is 720p on the handheld is just because OLED displays are expensive yeah, and to have more pixels. Handheld. Although 720p for an OLED is actually pretty bad. Yeah, but most f- mobile phones that it can do like 60 hertz refresh rate are like 300 quid. So I don't know. <laughs> Or like 120 hertz refresh rate on a screen with an OLED can cost like 400 pounds. So it can't be that expensive to have a screen for mass production. Um, I'm just going to check. What's the, what's the Steam Deck's resolution? Steam Deck resolution is 1280 by 800, which is almost the same as 720p resolution. Anyway, let's go on to uh, Tech Time on Science Shenanigans as we're talking about tech and mm-hmm. continue with NVIDIA, where NVIDIA's latest GPU drivers can upscale old blurry YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, so NVIDIA's new GPU drivers today will upscale old blurry U- web videos on RTX 30 and 40 series cards. Uh, RTX Video Super Resolution is a new AI upscaling technology from NVIDIA that works inside Chrome or Edge to improve any video in a browser by sharpening the edges of objects and reducing video artifacts. NVIDIA will support videos between 3060p and 1440p up to 144Hz in frame rate and upscale all the way up to 4K resolution. This is impressive 4K upscaling has previously only been available on on NVIDIA Shield TV. But recent advancements to Chromium Engine have allowed NVIDIA to bring this to its latest RTX 30 and 40 series cards. So basically you can see something from like crappy resolution and it will make it better resolution so all those old favorite youtube videos of yours that you love from the olden days like um is it dramatic chipmunk or whatever it is the one that was doom and its head just swivels i have no idea what you're talking about uh, dan you had no childhood why does everyone say this to me Literally, everyone tells me. <laughs> you don't know anything <laughs> So many pop cultural references just go over your head because you haven't lived. <laughs> just... I'm trying to live now. We'll go back. Watch Friends. 
<laughs> Watch all the early 90s cartoons, like TV shows, childhood cartoons of every generation. No, I've missed that phase. You know, I, I've missed the ones before before now. I'm trying to live my life now, all right? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is cool. This is like the one good use of AI. The one good use of it. Yeah, to be fair, upscaling stuff's pretty cool. NVIDIA seems to be doing a lot for it now. I think there's been a few problems with DLSS 4, I think. Is it, is it now DLSS 4? Oh, also, this is the fun thing about it. Um, that Because of the technicality of it, they can you could basically go and use Netflix, where you typically have to pay extra for the 4K streams. You could just upscale it, and it would be 4K. <laughs> So you wouldn't be paying the extra. So you could pay for the lower tier Netflix thing, which would piss Netflix off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're already losing subscribers because of their increased price range and lack of password sharings. Now, if people can drop down to the lower resolution and upscale it to 4K, why would you buy the other one? Do you know what? I've canceled my, net my Netflix. Why? <laughs> why not? Did they remove <laughs> Arcane off the service? <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm just okay, using other people's. Good. Fair enough. So you're not scared of the password sharing? No, I mean, well, no, I'm, no, my dad's got his own now. But he's got his was free, I think, part of a new TV package, so I cancelled mine. Nice. So I was like, well, look at that. They've lost more money. To be honest, I could steal mine off my mum, but I like having 4K. So. <laughs> Whereas hers is just base Netflix. I also get mine half discounted anyway, because I'm using it. I'm going through my phone contact, which pays for the basic plan anyway, and I just pay the extra. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it for the news. Let's go into recommend do recommend don't what have you watched this week you would recommend uh, i watched all of the well i'd already watched the first two creed movies but i rewatched them again and then i watched the third creed movie it's a solid trilogy man um not much more to say I, if you like boxing or even if you don't like boxing they're just good you don't have to watch any of the rocky movies to care <laughs> No, to be fair, I watched a bit of boxing as well. I, I watched, you know, the Jake Paul fight. Very happy he lost. Oh, he finally lost one. Was he actually yeah, he against the boxer? Curry. Yeah. Wow, shocking, eh? <laughs> when he goes up against someone who can actually box and not someone who's a retired MMA fighter or a YouTuber or any other variant, he loses. Shocking. <laughs> yeah, although in part of the contract, they have to have a rematch. Wow. Amazing. Because Jake Paul can have it if he if he lost, he had to be one and done. Well, I hope he loses again, and then that will shut him up, and he'll die in the ring like Apollo Creed. Oh, has that happened? Yeah, that happened in Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky 4? Damn, you spoiled it for me. All I those spoiled, years ago. How old is that movie? It's like 19 something. Uh, Rocky 4. 1985. You spoiled a movie from 1985 for me? I, I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. Well, sucks to be you. <laughs> a movie that came out 40 years ago, nearly. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, no, the Rocky movies uh, I haven't watched, but I watched the Creed ones because I like Michael B. Jordan, but Michael B. Jordan and Tessa Thompson's in it, and they're really good. I really enjoy them. That's pretty cool. Maybe I'll check it out one day. You know, I feel they like they are on to... Amazon. The first two, so, and I think yeah, they're going well, on Netflix as well. But you, yeah, it might be worth doing. I've not really watched anything or played anything apart from Nightfall. I have played Nightfall. Would I say to buy it? Honestly, not at the moment. Uh, yeah, mm, yeah, I don't know. I think it's fine, but not a full price. What, you don't want to pay 80 quid, Dan, for the season passes and all of that, which I did, because I always do it. Uh, to be also, fair, I, I will play it, but this campaign wasn't it, man. I don't know what it was. I haven't but... finished the campaign, so I, I, I'm enjoying what I've played, though. I just don't like the character. <laughs> It's the, not the new ones. I, th I actually I like, like the, the witness. I the think the witness is good, and I like Callus. Uh, it's just I think the story could have been done a lot better. And I think the biggest problem for me is Nimbus. Also, you can't use the grapple hook. What do you mean you can't use it? You can't. You keep what? flying off the edge. And ah, dying. yeah, but I got no. Yeah, I got I got used to it in the end. I got used to it in the end. Mm. And I do enjoy it. But I would say once you do unlock it, it takes the recharge rate is too long. Oh, well, yeah, it they've, takes they've added grenade. too much charge on everything. Yeah, to make well, it takes you basically have to get grenade, better gear. So you lose your grenade and it takes over a second, it takes over a minute to regenerate. And you're like, well, I feel with the fucking drop down, cool down health thing on solar. They well, added a timer actually, to. That actually is useful. Like, that, that, you have a big benefit from that. You don't have that much of a benefit being able to quickly. Yeah, but move. it used to be a free benefit. <laughs> With a like next to zero cooldown timer, and now it's dependent on your fucking 
something or other. I can't remember what one it is. Recovery or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it it takes nearly a minute and a half, whereas before I could just insta drop down, heal myself. So there's no benefit to it. The only benefit to it now is that it uh it heals your teammates if they're next to you, but it's useless because you have to wait a minute and a half, and your teammates are very rarely ever next to you. It doesn't help you have shit armor. Oh yeah, no, I I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> if you actually had decent armor, you'd probably be all right. But you got shite armor. Yeah, but that's because I haven't played the game properly in ages, and I haven't grinded the fuck out of it. Unlike but... me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for listening. This has been Thoughts Being Promotions Presents the News. Please check out TBO for our episode on unpopular opinions, where Danny tries to cancel me. It's... Yep. I actually reckon that's probably one of our best episodes we've ever done. I agree. I edited the shit out of that one. It was a good episode. Everyone should check that one out. Stick and... around to the very end. There's a big surprise. Okay, cool. I will check this out after the podcast. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye.